Hey folks, I'm back already and um, it's kind of an addendum to yesterday and also I just I'm in the mood to continue talking. So I did a little bit more um, um, looking into um, the records I talked about yesterday on Optim Optimal Music, a pretty cool label and um, also befriended JD Twitch, the guy who's behind the label. But um, I, I found this article on Pitchfork where this album, um, the company Optimo um, were uh, sent a cease and desist letter from Sony Records saying that the, okay, I'll turn this off for now, but I'll tell you what that is in a minute, saying that they, they couldn't use this title, that it was too similar to their series called Now That's What I Call Music. And apparently Sony won and um, JD had to change the title of this. So what I have here, they had to destroy these. So I wanna thank the label for sending this to me. I don't know how many other folks have this, but they had to redesign this uh, with a different title. So this is um, kind of a unique piece here um, that they sent me and I, I said, wow, so this is, this won't this goes out I guess this is being released next month but it'll have a different title and cover so this is a unique piece I have here or so it seems pretty cool thank you optimal music thank you um, what I was playing in the background is Scritti Politi's very first single goes along with the, the whole DIY thing they were talked about in the uh, in the notes in here talking about the origins of DIY. They talk about the band Desperate Bicycles being probably one of the first in England to do the DIY punk single and Scritti Politi also being among the first. I remember remember reading about this in the English n music news and ordering it online from overseas. Something about the way it was described caught my interest Somehow I knew I would like it, and and I did. I, it's just nothing like the pop hits that they had. This is all handmade, hand stamped, um, xeroxed, and put together by the band themselves. Need to clean the record there. But uh, unique songs, um, scratchy. The lyrics are you know you have to kind of listen. There's literary references. It's um, socially conscious stuff. And so um pulled that uh, and have been listening to this this morning. Just to talk a little bit more about music and maybe anything else that comes to mind. Um, I was playing just for a moment last night this one-off. This is a one of a kind. Sabas Georgiadis, the fella from uh, Greece who co-released my latest album sent this to me a couple years ago where he had had printed up probably two copies one for himself and one for me um, some of my material that he had gotten off of my band camp site that he really likes and wanted to have on vinyl so that's playing this the, the quality on this is is it's poor um, because of the mastering um, the way it was mastered but it's still neat to have it on vinyl and um, Interestingly, a couple of songs that are on here did end up being on Myths and Realities proper because um, Sebas likes them so much. What else have I been playing? Just so I can talk about music a little bit more. I pulled this um, reissue of this Italian prog rock. Um, I think it's a masterpiece by the band Osana Palepoli. I think this was a re originally released in 1972 there's a strong folk flavor to this album like it was made you can imagine this having been made long ago uh, in parts it sounds like it was it's just it's just wonderful I don't speak Italian so I don't know the storyline once again because I don't really listen to music for lyrics that leaves it free to allow me to just fantasize about what I think it means. I just love this album and love the, the music. I just love it. 
another um, classic Canterbury album that I played this all the way through last night because it never gets old, even though it was recorded in 1969. Egg. Folks that know about progressive rock music, if you really know anything about progressive rock music, you know about Egg, you know about Dave Stewart, uh, Mont Campbell, Clive Brooks. Three piece keyboard oriented. Um, I, I don't. There's not a direct comparison to Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer in that it's a keyboard let group. So I don't think they bear comparing beyond that. But if someone were to ask me to name the band that I think is tops when it comes to, to like a three piece prog. It wouldn't be Emerson, Lake and Palmer, it's Egg. No diss to Keith Emerson, I just think this music is more original to my, uh, my sensibilities. Fantastic album. A collector's item, too. Listened to most of this last night, a, a various artists compilation from the Schematic label, which no longer exists, but it was an electronic music label. Um, Dino Felipe had uh, some releases on this label. I collaborated with him. Uh, Autobahn Chirac is someone else on here you may have heard of. Who else on here you may have heard of? This is quite Matmos. Really enjoyed this. Um, name of this is House of Distraction. Really enjoyed this last night. I was doing a Can Canterbury trip um, a little bit last night, you know, which led me to playing the egg. I started with Bill Rupert, who is not Canterbury himself, but Dave Stewart, the keyboardist, who I associate with the Canterbury sound, was in um, Rupert's band. And this is a wonderful album with Annette Peacock on vocals, Jeff Berlin, Alan Holdsworth. Everything about this album is wonderful. The first side plays like a suite to me, like it's all connected. Then I got into National Health again, Dave Stewart, keyboardist, Prime um, composer on this album, just fantastic, just one of the best um, progressive rock albums in my opinion. This is just fantastic music. John Greaves on bass and vocals has a lot to do with the magic here, as well as Pip Pyle on drums, who is no longer with us. Pip Pyle first came to my attention through being a member uh, of Gong in the early days. Another National Health Canterbury related album is Alan Gowan, Bill Miller, Richard Sinclair, you know those names, and before a word is said, Trevor Tompkins. In some ways, this could be considered a Gilgamesh or album. Gilgamesh, again, another band that I associate with the Canterbury sound. This is wonderful. It's really quite jazzy, before a word is said. Those got played last night. What else is sitting out here? I had played this um, because I'd ran in, run into the main guy from this band at my show Friday night in Omaha. This is uh, Porn and Murdsbo, a collaboration. Album is called And the Devil Makes Three. Porn, the band, is led by Tim Moss, who is currently managing Faith No More. He's not just their road manager, he is their, road, he is their manager. Um, he's from Omaha, he's a, he's a friend. Um, he showed up at my gig Friday night. I had no idea he was in town, and he was just in for a day, uh, headed to South America the next day to continue touring with Faith No More. But this is his um, thing. Grunge, noise, uh, dark, and uh, I listened to this all the way through. I love both of their bodies of work, particularly I like Mertzbow, you know, master of... of I don't know if call him a master, it's just a way of giving him props for what he does with um, electronics and noise, brutal noise. Um, this is very good. Horn with Mertzbo, Tim Moss, my friend. This is Ben. Really enjoyed that. What else is sitting out that I haven't shown? Okay, I had this out. Haven't listened to them in a long time, so I pulled this. Deer Hoop of Ben Maggie. Now, when this came out, it was poo pooed uh, in the in the uh, press. You know how they do 
oh this is their worst album oh this isn't this isn't compared to this that and at the time I was agreeing but listening to it with some time passing you can see that the band was trying something a little different on this album and it's good you just have to just fall in with what they're trying it's great a Ben Maggie deer hook and then this is another Canterbury related album that's just classic Henry Cow concerts Robert Wyatt is a guest on here um, they do Little Red Riding Hood Hits the Road from Robert Wyatt's Rock Bottom album on here. Live version. It's fantastic. Excellent. Henry Cowell. Good music for the mind and for the intellect as well as the spirit. You know, so much music and so much culture is focused on sex. And ain't nothing wrong with that because that's how we got here. But for God's sake, it's like we really seems like large parts of, of our focus is merely on that sex I'm there too however because of who I am and my personality and the path that I'm on I need music like this to help me maintain because I'm not like a lot of people were my focus is on getting sex and all the convoluted madness that goes along with it you know I just am one of those unfortunate people who has not had a lot of good um, um, experiences with trying to be in good intimate relationships with someone. They've mostly just been very um, irksome and I think it's mainly because of my head, not other people, you know. Understand what I'm saying? It's me, you know. We're supposed to hook up but it's just so convoluted and crazy. So I seek out music that helps me sublimate, you know. It, you know, seriously I do, you know. I'm not sitting up here listening to sex records all day, focusing, you know, on that because it'd make me crazy. So I find other places to go and this music does it for me. Last thing I think I'll show is this album by BBJR, Bob Bucko Jr. Kind of an outsider folk artist who I became familiar with a couple years ago and have played with live. This is his album called How to Fuck All Your Coworkers in One Sitting on Capture Records. Real basic anti-pop, uh, anti-industry approach here. And the record is like that too. My first playing of it was like, okay, it's like I'm gonna have to just really want to listen to this because it makes no concession to you, at the listener. It's like whatever Bob Bucko was deciding to do for this record, whatever he was expressing is what you hear. and you bravely get with it or you don't. I've listened to this enough where I've been able to get with it and it's really actually quite powerful because again, as I say so often, we experience the world through our own perceptions so what we give to the world is our view. Um, and it's mostly not shared. We, we just assume that everyone is kind of on the same page. but. This is a good example where the artist is really showing you or just giving you what's going on inside of him. And it's, um, you can, you can, you can try to get with it or miss it altogether. Um, compelling stuff, Bob Buckle Jr. I'll be playing a show with him actually in two, in two days here in Omaha. I have no idea if anyone's gonna come to the show. It's at a place I've never played at. It's at an art supply store. So, but I like stuff like that, house shows, stuff that's off the grid, um, not necessarily trying to do the quote unquote music business thing, but just music and art existing because it just needs to. And people that find a way to propagate it always impresses me, you know, and the fact that Bob Buckle Jr. is able to put out albums, CDs, and tour, and is virtually unknown that it impresses me and inspires me so that's what I got for you today folks um, uh, just power to the BC there are a lot of folks who I haven't watched in a long time and um, you know I do I, I'm neurotic about that I feel like I feel a certain times I feel a certain amount of guilt and it's like I just have to let it go it's like I just have to do my thing 
but honor and respect to all members of the BC. Honor and respect to all of you. All of you.